Welcome to another episode of Time Out with K2 House Fellowship Youth. We'll be discussing equal and unequal yokes. Um, the host today is Idowuda Milola. To my right, I have... Olushala and Oluwakwo. Evan Okene. Oluwatosin Olushala. And to my left, I have... Chigazi Juna. Rebecca Lala. Sumto Emenike. Okay. Um, looking at the topic equal and unequal yokes, you know, the Bible says that we should not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. And it is certain that we are in this world, obviously. It means one way or the other we are still going to have to relate with these people. We'll be focusing on relationship in different aspects and different spheres of life with different people and different individuals. Um, it is obvious that we have to meet different people every day we relate with different people, we go to work. That means you necessarily have to relate all the time, okay? And it is so important for us as Christian youth to be able to establish the parameters and the ways we can necessarily relate with these people without being unequally yoked with them, okay? Um, to this effect, I'm um, sorry, can Tosin please help us to um, state the types of relationships that you can think of with? Types of relationships that exist, um, all the top of my head, I can think of corporate relationships with colleagues okay. at work. Uh, we have relationships with um, our teachers, our parents, okay. siblings, family. We also have relationship with our neighbors, people in the community, right? our colleagues in school, that's classmates, and generally people that we come across in our day-to-day -day activities. Yeah, really. Okay, um, sorry, um, Gazi, can you please um, give us any other type of relationship that comes to your knowledge? Any other type of relationship? Yeah, um, like he has mentioned, um, most of the basics relationship that uh, we have out there, the relationship that are relationship that you don't have to um, make it. You, you don't have any choice. As long as you have choice, you, you you decide and you choose to be in those kind of relationships. But there are some that are natural. The ones that has to do with people that are your siblings, that are your parents, your uncles, your aunties, by blood, they are related to them. So, and you have to relate with them. There's a sense in that kind of relationship. And the relationship with people, even in terms of um, people you, are, you, you meet on your path in life, okay. different pathways. For example, we all have to, if you'd want to really um, survive in the world and um, is understand life. You need to be schooled. So you have to meet people in your training in school and all that. So I will just mention this one. One with your natural parents and siblings and uncles and then the one you see when you meet people uh, in school or in your places where you go undergo training. Okay. So I also have, like, we have relationship with um, our partners. Okay. That's, um, maybe during courtship or when we are married. Oh, okay. Um, so if I can get us all right now. Um, I think she was coming from the angle of we have relationships that are corporate relationships within uh, our work. We have the ones with teachers when we are in um, um, you know, educational environment. And there was a point that you made that I really like. You said we have natural relationships. These are relationships that we necessarily don't have control over. I mean, mm -hmm. we, can't, we, we necessarily can't determine who our parents are. So we, we were giving birth to and we, we just have to have them as our parents. So we have to relate with them. Okay, so I think that's, that's, that's from that aspect. And um, you were coming from the angle of the, um, I want to say, relationship with our partners. Okay, sorry, by partners, are you referring to um, partners in marriage? Yeah, it could be marriage, it could be Emotional, courtship. romantic yeah, sense yeah, romantic, of relationship. Uh, okay, relationship. okay. Then, then I think um, there, there's also the spiritual relationship. You know, oh, yes, yes. yes. There's a spiritual relationship. We were all born into a spiritual environment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, um, our parents were attending a church that we have to all belong to in the long run. Okay, mm -hmm. that being said, that being said, you know, we are coming from the angle of equal and unequal yokes here. Then that means there should be a difference between what equal yokes and unequal yokes mean. Okay, so can you please help us um, expand on what you think that the word equal and unequal yoke mean? Uh, no, please. Thank you. Um, well, as far as I can tell, I remember the Bible saying that um, we should not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. And so, um, 
equal or unequal they are english words okay yes <laughs> and so equal means something you know on the same level so so to speak it means that a relationship that is the same like you're on the same level yes while unequal is something obviously that's not on the same level so um i believe that when 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 we say equal and unequal yokes it means that the kinds of relationships that we should have that should be on the same level with such individuals okay and unequal as i had said earlier is one where you should you know there should be a definition there should be a boundary yeah there should be a difference so like i said it's an english word okay thank you so much you know this is actually a, a round table discussion so um we we'll are bringing up a whole lot of opinions. Um, from what you said, you, 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 are, you are stating something, you're coming from the angle of the same level, different level, right? Um, I think the word level is a bit, is, is, I, I, actually has a whole lot of, is, I don't want to use the word vague, but it can be more explicit. So what level are we talking about here? Level could be in the form of age, level could be in the form of sex, that you shouldn't relate with someone that is not a male or female. So you so what level are we looking at here? Um, Ewoma, um, can you help us with that, please? So what he's trying to say is that there can be a broad spectrum when you're talking about levels. So it covers different levels, but in this case, we're talking about spirituality. Someone being on the same spiritual level with you, because it's either if you're mixing with someone of a different spiritual level, there are two things that can happen. Either you bring the person up or the person brings you down. So, and in most case scenarios, it's possible that you're being brought down. So, being unequally yoked is not something that is advisable. So, that is the level we're talking about. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm still, uh, I, I, still, I, still, I still feel there's a need for us to drive down. You said spiritual level. Okay. Um, spiritual level in what sense? So, spiritual level, does it relate to, oh, I, I pray for 10 hours. I shouldn't relate to someone that prays for two hours or, you know. Or is there a... Okay, I think you want to help us out. Thank you. I just okay. want to clarify. Okay, okay. I mean, I, I want to believe what he meant by spiritual level is maturity level. Okay. okay. Right? How mature we are as Christians. Are we babies? Are we adults? Right? Are we eating meat or we're drinking milk? milk yes. Right? So yeah. that, that, that shows the variation when we come into fellowship with other believers. Okay. Yeah, Rebecca, please. Uh, well, I would say that the, the spiritual level would be if um, am i a christian do i believe or do i not believe i mean if we're already segregating a uh, baby the, the, we yes, all grow so. yes okay I, I think that was where i was really going to yeah. because in the real sense in the real sense um i think when the bible was talking about being equally and unequally you it was a general term for are you a christian have you been have you um, come to a point where you've accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? Now, it is, it is okay for someone that has been in the faith for seven years and has grown to a particular stage to relate with someone that just came into this faith, you know? Because actually, that is the system of growth that God has created for us. So you begin to grow and attain some level and some height. So um, I think we've, been able to, we've all been able to establish that. The equal yoke is, are you a Christian? Are you a Christian? Have you been saved? Have you come to a point where you've deliberately come to um, Christ and said, Jesus, I give you this life of mine? So it is not advisable for us. I think I'm, I, I can, uh, I'll be right to say it is not advisable for us to say a Christian should be relating with an unbeliever. Though I know that there are some things that are, there are some underlining factor in that aspect. And I believe as we go in deeper, yeah. we will begin to understand. You know, even in, in that aspect, it almost looks like the Bible was um, drilling it down to marriage. But even in relationships, generally, there is a level of intimacy that we need to establish that, okay, as Christians, how far, how intimate can we go with unbelievers? Okay, that being said, we said there are different types of um, relationships. And uh, there was one he said, which he said the natural relationship. So how do we relate with our parents? You know, how do we relate with our family? Let me try and paint a picture here, okay? It, is, it can be so awesome when you are giving birth to in a Christian family. I mean, especially when you both grew up in the same atmosphere, the same doctrine, it can be very nice. Now, what happens in a situation where, as a Christian youth, you've been exposed to the light, you have touched the light, you have Jesus in you, 
But your parents, they are not, they've not attained that yet. They could be another religion, you know, or probably they are just Christians, but there are some things they've not touched yet. There are some belief that needs to be dealt with. How do you relate with them in that sense? Um, can some to help us with that, please? How do you relate with them in that sense? Okay. Um, thank you very much for that question. Okay. Okay. Relating with, um, see, our parents that are not you, that are not uh, in the faith. Okay. It can be difficult. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say because I haven't experienced because my parents are Christians, obviously. But for someone in that situation, it takes. It could take a lot. It could take prayers. It could take your life as an example, it could take, uh, it takes a whole lot for you to get them to see, because you be able, being able to come into the faith, you saw the light in someone else. Someone showed the light to you, and with some level you, uh, with some level of experience, you came to the point where you realized that, okay, this guy is actually bringing the truth to me, and, and I'm seeing some light in it. If I, in that same way, go with the light the bible says that you do not light a candle and hide it under a bushel yes but you put yes. it on the table where every light every person will see like we earlier said being equally and being unequally youth the simple example is light has no business with darkness yes. Yes. and where there is light darkness flees so you being uh, the only person okay you being the, a christian in your home you are the light in your home and you're expected to shine as much as possible, enough to attract your parents. So it will take a lot of patience, it will take a lot of prayer, it will take serious commitment, it will take serious fervency and consistency. Because you shouldn't, at that point, you shouldn't be seen wavering, you're up today, down tomorrow. It's good, it's, it's, it just takes the grace of God, generally. Okay, thank you so much. I, I, I think... Um the angle you came from was saying that um, you are a light. You are in an environment where being a light is not easy, you know? Because, and I think there, there, there is an interesting part to this, though a very sad part, because you will, be, you will be persecuted by your parents, you know? You have to go through a lot. I've, I've been privileged to meet with one of few people that are in this shoe, you know? And the truth there is that it's not easy. It is difficult. It takes a whole lot of sacrifice. You know, you get to a point, let's say you're still a student as a youth, and they're telling you, see, you want to follow this Jesus. All right, let Jesus pay your school fee. It's true. <laughs> and, and that's a practical experience because it becomes very difficult for you as a Christian. You don't have any other way to get your finance. And your parents are telling you, you came from a very nice angle. Keep being the light. I think it would be so wrong to say, you are a Christian and you're being rebellious. You know, and, and at that point, it's, it's almost very difficult to balance between rebellion and following Christ. Yes, you know, because your parents will need you to do one or two things that are not godly. But they are your parents. So, um, Tosin, can you help us shed light into how you handle those type of situations? Looking at the sacrificial part, the painful part of you may have to lose some things. You may have to lose some benefits. And also the part where you have to do some things that are not in consonance, in agreement with everything your parents want, but it agrees with the rule of Christ. You know, there's a part of scripture in Ephesians that says to obey your parents in the Lord and then to honor. Okay. Right? So in, in honoring, you cannot go ahead to disobey unless it's a it's a specific, it's a, it's a disobedience to God's specific instruction. But in that, in that instance, it takes wisdom yes. to manage yes. the parents. Yes. But if they've given you an express ex, uh, instruction, like you said, you can't be rebellious about it because your reaction would also tell them something, to tell them something about you. Uh, it so happened that in school, I had, I had someone who was a Muslim and he had an encounter, right? He had an encounter, he spoke to me, but I, I, I passed him on to another brother because he was a brother. And same thing happened. Apparently the parents, I mean, pushed him out. 
pu- pulled out of you know mm-hmm. taking care of okay. his expenses okay. and all of that but it was it was privileged because we had a a school fellowship you know and we had people who were willing to sacrifice and you know offer to help you know to support him not many people have that privilege, that privilege yes. but i mean the lord knows how to you know provide for his own right if, if if you know what the light of sin stick with it but don't rub it on everybody's faces that you know more than them or you are you are, you are in the light they are they are not yet in the humility light humility comes in there humility has yes. to come in and yes. like yes. somto said earlier there. your lifestyle can preach can preach to them so they see that oh despite all i've heard it said that despite all the persecution that someone has been getting from the home front Nothing, nothing shakes. That's the reason why so, just a few siblings, that's all they saw that, ah, for you to stick to this Christ like this, there must be something that we are not getting. And that was what encouraged them. Though, of course, not, the parents didn't come in, but at least one or two of the siblings, you know, started approaching, started coming closer. And it's, it's a win. Mm-hmm. I mean, one win is, is good win. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. I think yeah, I know um, something to say. Yes, it's okay. so interesting that oh. as she was talking, um, I got another side to it because I remember in the scriptures um, that I think Jesus was saying that in order to be my disciple or to follow me, you have to, um, s- paraphrasing, you have to be, say, maybe against your parents or or. You know, I I would I would really d- like that I get the exact scripture, but it was clear that in order to follow me, like outrightly, you. yeah, you have to make some sacrifices. And so I want to believe that in a situation where the parents are outright unbelievers, in order to stand your ground as a Christian, as the Christian that you are, if you would require that, you have to have a clear a clear clash. Because we've really um, laid emphasis on how that we make them see us as light. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we are not rebellious and things like that. But in the light of what the scripture has said in this regard, I would also see that men, it, Christ matters. Like every other opinion, every other individual, even though they are parents, even though they are your family, when it comes to following Christ, Christ. when it comes to being his disciple or carrying your cross, you have to face your front. You have to go head on. Yeah. Thank you. So I just wanted to um, okay, thank you for that. that. I think um, if I think from what we've all said, we are we are coming to the conclusion that or we are establishing the fact that see you're a Christian, and that's first. You have to show forth a light. Either while you're with co-Christians or even when your parents are not Christians. Now, there is a wisdom to it. I think that was what she said. There, there, there is a wisdom approach to it. But the wisdom approach should not bring you to a point where you are um, bending, compromising. You understand? But there is a wisdom approach to it. You know? There, is, there, are, there are ways you do it. For, for, for example, look at a situation where um, you are a child, Okay? And your father is like, see, I want you to send me money. Eh? There, is a, there is this particular idol we worship in our land. You have to send money. We, see, this idol needs to be worshipped. If this idol is not worshipped, <laughs> you may be gone. <laughs> you know, there, there is a wisdom part to it. Not, you know, wisely telling your father that, I understand your concerns. You don't want me to die. <laughs> Glory to God. But it is a matter. <laughs> my life is hidden true. in Christ. That's true. You know, my life is hidden in Christ. Okay? Sir. Sir, I understand and I really appreciate, you know. But, but there is a way you would say that you'd be like, what's the meaning of this? Actually, you know, there, you know, Christ has given us this type of art that helps us to, even when we are um, against some view, we say it in love. You know? Rejection in love. I think I think that's here. Yeah, I think that I think that's where that comes in. Okay, I think you there's something you want to uh, say. Okay, I just had the prompt in my spirit and I just felt to drop it and I think the verse is um the first Peter four sixteen where it says, Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, mm. but let him glorify God in that name. 
So we're relating it to this. Whoever is in that situation, it's, it might not be a guarantee that your parents, it might not be about your parents, it might be about you. In the sense that that could be a persecution to build you to, build you mm. to a certain level. So maybe at that point in time or at that particular period, maybe your parents might get saved later for a different cause, which you have already set in motion. But at that particular period, it could be for you as a person and it could be for your personal growth. It could be for your own personal revelation of a side of Christ, which you haven't been revealed to. So I just felt I should drop that before we move thank ahead. Thank you. Thank um, you. So on that note, I, I think um, the angle is coming from is, is actually a very important angle. You know, the Bible says all things, all things work together, all things. And it is so interesting that all things actually, <laughs> it's not good things alone, you know, even those moments of trials. All right. Um, I think we've been able to go deeply and access uh, explicit as possible on the matter of family. Now, you know, there's professional relationship. I think that was where you, you came from, the, the corporate relationship. Um, corporate relationship now, you work, we all, I mean, as a youth, you work in an office, you are a student in a campus. In short, campus matter is a different thing entirely. It's a different thing entirely. You know, in a situation where you are asked to compromise, not even because you're a Christian, because it is almost the norm around that. See, you want an A. I remember I, 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 I've, I've had a privilege of counseling a few students, a few, I mean, colleagues that had gone through this. I remember a, a friend that was meant to get an A, you know, I think a B in a course, actually got a B. Why? Because she was not ready to bend to the lecturer. It, 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 was, it was a very difficult situation. What was necessary? I mean, she went there and she, she saw her as cause. She had a B in the course. And the lecturer was saying, okay, you know what? You had a B. No problem. Close the door. Ah. You know, but, but it, it was a very difficult thing for her. That meant a lot for her. That actually caused her to finish with a lower grade. It, and, you know, and that's a whole long journey of life for her to, to have to relive. The memory is something she will have to stay. So, in relating with prof in, in the professional atmosphere, talking about your boss, you need a promotion. You know what you got to do. You know, your boss does not believe in Christ. And he believes in, I'm paying you, <laughs> you know. I'm paying you, so you, you should not have some say. So how do you relate? It, 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 at times, it doesn't have to go to the extreme. You know, there are times when it just has to deal with disagreeing with their opinions. It just has to do with not agreeing with some of the things they're saying. Rebecca, how can you help us to um, talk about relating in the professional world, be it in the um, atmosphere of um, the educational institute or even in the corporate world? Can you please help us on that? Okay, so... In the corporate world or in the workspace, at least I've had some experience. And um, honestly, I would say, during in the workspace, relating with your boss, okay, your boss pays you a salary. You're supposed to deliver to some extent. And then um, the work workspace is not favorable like the conditions of work are not favorable like that how do you how do you tackle it as a christian i'm i'm now i'm now relieving some memories here there you can get edgy and get overboard and then start being rude to your boss or you can remember that you are supposed to be humble mm. probably bring 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 uh, bring the bring the problems or the issues that you find on ground maybe bring them to your boss, bring them to her attention in a humble way, not being rude. I don't know if I'm, if I'm, if I'm making a point. Yeah, 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 so yeah. my point here is being a little humble. Like, I'm just learning that, actually. I think the angle you're coming from is talking about humility. Yeah. Talking about, uh, because at times, in relating with our boss, it's not all the time that they are evil. At times, it has a whole lot to I do with. I mean, evil. they are not evil, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, somehow. That, that's, that, that's, that's very true. It's not all the time they are requesting for things that are uh, explicitly against God's will. At times, it just has to do with. Um, though, I, 
have, I, I think there is a need for us to establish that not slothful in business, fervent in spirit is key. It is very key. Do you know? I'm a Christian. I think that gives me extra, uh, if I'm right. That's, that's extra for me, right? I should, I should be extraordinary. I should be able to um, break limits in my workspace. So it's not, that should, lead, you know, as a Christian, when you're now giving opinions and suggestions to your boss, because you have that, yes, yes, it, it, they've seen the extra around you. I think that helps to go a long way to keep you in line, you know? Then what, what, where she's coming from is not being rude, not being, you know, try to explain when the need comes in. Don't feel, ah, sir, see, look here, I've been getting the result. You know, as Christians, we are, it, it, it's, almost, it's almost difficult. Actually, when you are right, hey, what is, is he shouting at you? What's your problem? Okay, sorry. Closer. From training, there is, there's a difference between a personal life and a work life. Work life, thank you. That's where you find the phrase work-life balance. Yes. Right? You were paid, you were hired to do a job. You earn a pay just because you've done the job, right? Mm -hmm. Your employer owns your time in which you've signed a contract to do that job. So they expect you to carry out the, 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 the duties that they've handed to you, the tasks they've handed to you. Now, you have no... You have very little say in the kind of um, the, the 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 if you've signed a contract, you are bound by it. Yeah, you are bound by it. Where the problem comes is when they are giving you task that is against your values, personal values, and that's where you have to consider my personal goals. How is it aligning with the organizational goals? If it is not, find your square root. But it, because we find in the corporate world, <laughs> especially corporate Nigeria, <laughs> there are a lot of things that you would have to do. Not because they are, they are everybody does it, quote and unquote. Everybody does it. I mean, you want, you want new businesses. Your boss is telling you, Tosin, you know call this guy. Why is he giving us a tough time? Call him. Speak to him. Find out exactly what he needs, right? Mm -hmm. And then if you need anything, just let me know. Insinuating that, oh, why not call him out to lunch? If you need funds, um, let me know, right? But you know that you, if, you, if, you, if you try to give room for such a thing, it's, a big, it's the beginning of many more yes. to come. Yeah. You open the door. You open a door, but in order for you to, before you can say, sir, I'm, I apologize, I cannot do this, you need to come with a solution. You can't say, oh, there's a problem, I, we can't, we, this, is a, this is a problem. And the solution they are, they are preferring, you can't stick with it. You need to come with your own solutions. And that's what I want to say when you were talking about being a Christian and having an edge. Mm. You carry the Holy Ghost. There's Thank no you. there's no way you would be on the same pedestal with the other person. Yeah. So obviously you, you, you've had previous track records of success. I mean, you can't you, you it would be difficult for you if you've been um failing to deliver. You, find you, yourself in that situation. you can't be slothful. Exactly. In See, we have Ooh, unbelievers, we have unbelievers yeah. who are who are key performers. They are high flyers. Thank you. Organizations want them. They want them to remain on their team. Yeah. Whether or not they are even Christians, if you're if you're not a Christian and you're you are performing, I want you on my team. Yes. There's, exactly. It's nothing personal, it's business. It's business. Yeah. Okay, but How? I'm sorry, I, I just I mean there's training. What if you do not know? How, how do you perform if you don't know? If you don't know. I'm just saying. If you don't know, yeah. I won't hire you in the first place. The no, I mean, I mean there are <laughs> no, jobs some, that you sometimes, do not. But in order not to digress into the workplace dynamics. No, you said we but, have, you have to, as a Christian, mm, you have to perform. perform. Okay, you know what? In case um, where you do not know, and then you are under pressure to perform, you do not know how you're supposed to do You go it. learn. Exactly. You I learn. You, have, you, you go to mentors. You, you, you go to coaches. You train. See, the so thing is, is the what, what I'm getting like, at... At least your boss or be your organization should be able to also 
I mean, train you. I mean, okay, if you do not sorry. Have let me let me say this. Let me just say this for the record. You are first responsible for your personal and career development. It is first your responsibility. Mm-hmm. It's good when the organization does it. It's great. It's it's part of a re- it's part of retention strategy to train yes, your train you your, your 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 employees. But if they don't, you have a life. You have your career path. You have your career goal. If they don't train you customer relationship, and you know that you need customer relationship management knowledge to move further in your career, you go ahead and learn it. Or you find someone who knows about it and stick with that person to learn it. But the point I'm getting at, coming back to the, co- the discourse is, as a Christian, they, they cannot compare you to an unbeliever. I'm not saying under religion. Someone who is not born again. Born again yeah. And then you're on the same level. No. You're coming with an edge. You're coming with uh, uh, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Ghost. I don't want to use a third mind, right? Because things are happening. I mean, look at the pandemic. Things are happening in business. People, organizations are looking up to people to also help them to provide solutions. How can we manage our people from home? How can we manage so our can resources? We use your edge to provide a solution. In, in, in. I mean, and you come to, to your boss the next day and say, Sir, I perceive that we should do this. Oh, oh, have we thought about doing this? You might not be invited to sit on the, at the table, but the ideas you drop, they will create a, set, a seat for you. You will join them there. I love that part. I love that. Thank, thank, thank you so much. I, short, I, I seriously love that part. They will create a seat for you. I, I love that part. Seriously. You know, we are Christians. We carry something. There is, there is an extra in us. We sit among kings and princes. <laughs> sit, we, we, we sit here. I, I love that. We sit among kings and queens. Oh, no, me, me. Exactly. Diligent in business, not slothful. <laughs> See, as that woman, what? Diligent, Diligent in business. It shall stand before. It is key. It is. That's what we carry. Okay, all right. Thank you so much.